I'm going to say right out the gate, this question is not nearly as hard as it looks, but a lot of students just looked at it and they're like, <laughs> no, I've got time for that, skip, and then come back, okay? So I'm going to walk you through this, but it is critically important. One of the dangerous things you know is, I don't know if you've done this before, you look at a question, you don't know how to do it. So you look at the solution, you read this through the solution, and the solution makes sense to you, and you fall into the trap of thinking, oh, therefore I know how to do the question. But the hardest part of the solution is not the working that's there, it's coming up with like looking at the question, dissecting what's important, what's not important, and, um, and then crafting that in a path through the question. So you need to think through this quite carefully with me. So pen in hand, because you're definitely gonna need to keep up with me as we go. Let's try and work out first, what do you think are the important facts that you see in this introductory paragraph? What do you think is the first piece of information that's vital? 12.5 hours is the first number that, that's sort of a thing. Oh, I should write that down, that matters, okay? 12.5 hours, what is the significance of this piece of information? It's the time between successive high tides, that's what they say, okay? So you have to kind of actually know, oh, what does water do? <laughs> what does the ocean do, right? It starts at high tide, it dips down to low tide, and then it comes back up. It's a high tide. So do you have a picture in your head, and you should absolutely draw this, right? Do you have a picture in your head of what this tide is doing? Right? They've already told you it's simple harmonics, so you know it's gonna be sine or cosine. It starts from high, it goes down to low, comes back up to high, right? And they're telling you that the 12.5 hours is the time between successive high tides. Does that make sense? So this is, I told you I wasn't sure we were just coming back. This is the period of motion. Does that make sense? So I can say, that's the significance of this figure, and I'm going to pull that into my working later on, okay? Period. So um, what's the next piece of information? that's vital that you think I should write down? High tide. High tide occurs at 2 a.m. High tide occurs at 2 a.m. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit and also read a little bit further into the question. Can you see in part one, they refer back to that first high tide. They say T is the number of hours after high tide. Does that make sense? So what's T equals zero if T is the number of hours after high tide? T equals zero is 2 a.m., it's high tide. Okay, so I'm gonna write down all those pieces of information, right? T equals zero is 2 a.m., and that is high tide. And does this make sense? So you know when we work out functions for simple harmonic motion, we have to think about where do you begin? Well, they've just defined a beginning spot, an initial condition for me, okay? So there's my T equals zero. Is there anything else in the, uh, the introductory paragraph that I should write down? Yeah, thank you. 10 meters, four meters are high tide and low tide. So I'm going to say high tide, that's equal to 10 meters. And I can say low tide is equal to four meters. And I think I have, you know, squeezed out of this everything that was important in the opening paragraph. Lots of stuff about chips and that kind of thing, which we will turn to later, but these are the numbers that are going to matter to me and I need to do something specific with them. Part one. Oh yeah, Aaron, um, question. Since low tide, could you say um, when T is 6.25? Okay, so I will, come to, um, I will come to the times for low tide in a minute. As it turns out, yes, I could say T equals 6.25 at that, uh, or when that happens, but as you'll discover later on, it doesn't end up mattering when that is, and so I'm not going to state it. I, I'm just literally, I'm getting out of the question all the direct things that it says, if that makes sense, yeah? Even though I can infer that, that's fine. Okay, now let's have a look at part one. They give us an equation for the water depth. They really want you, this is a signal by the way, we really want you to su succeed at this question. We are handing this to you, we even hand you this, we say show that and then they give you a time, you notice that? Right? So even if you can't do one, or you can't do two, you can use part one and two to progress the later parts. So this is the equation they, that we should land up on. How do we actually demonstrate that that's the case? Okay, well you see the seven and the three and the four pi on 25, I've got to find out from here where all of that comes from, okay? So, any suggestions? Is there a piece of information here that I could directly use that will help me get on the path toward that equation? We wrote down the period first, why don't we use that, okay? Now we know with a trig function that the period is equal to two pi on n, very good. That's a result that we can quote. 
But in fact, we know what the period is it was given in the question. So I can say 12.5 equals that 2 pi on n. Okay? This is kind of reassuring because that 12.5 you can see relates to the 25 that's in the equation I'm supposed to go to, right? Always one eye on my working and another eye on my final destination. So if I multiply through by n and also divide through by 12.5, this is what we have. One more step and I have that 4 pi on 25 that I'm trying to get to. Okay, so I've got my n which is going to go at the front, thumbs up. Okay. All right, what else do I need in that equation that I can't just state, I actually need to show where it comes from? Any suggestions? Say it again. Okay, so there's the 7 and then there's the 3. Okay, we'll come to the 7 in a second. That 3, where does it come from? Well, 3, the number that's at the front of your sine or cosine function represents the amplitude, right? It's how far you go, okay? So you can see how far I go based on, have a look at the information that you wrote down, this number and this number. You see that? So I can say, oh, the amplitude is halfway between your extremes of motion, right? Sorry, not your amplitude, that's your center of motion. Your amplitude is, is half of the distance between your centers of motion. So your distance between the centers, sorry, extremes of motion. That's your distance, 10 take away 4 between the extremes, and the amplitude is half of that, right? So 10 take away 4 is 6, 6 divided by 2, that gives you your 3. That's A. Is that okay? Last piece of information, or last bit that's in the equation anyway, and I'm going to get it from the same thing. The 7 represents, and I kept saying it because I kept thinking it anyway, it's the, it's the shift, the vertical shift, which represents the fact that the center of motion is not actually at 0, it's halfway between those extremes, right? So I can say center of motion is not 10 minus 4 on 2, it's actually 10, 10 plus 4, right? right? I'm averaging out the two extremes now, okay? Not finding the distance between them, I'm averaging them out. That gives me 7, okay? And that center is B. That's what we usually call it in the standard way that we write this, okay? Yep. You know that the amplitude is 3 and the height is 10 could just do 10 minus 3. Yeah, you could also do that. Same, same information, different path. That's totally fine. This looks really good. I've got 4 pi on 25, I've got 3, I've got 7. There's one last thing that they've given us that I haven't accounted for yet. Cosine. Why is it cosine and not sine? Yeah, it starts at high tide. It starts at one of the extremes rather than starting... You don't have to draw this, obviously. Rather than starting at the center of motion. So I need to state that in some way because this is, after all, a show question, right? So all I need to say is, since motion begins at an extreme, right? Therefore, it's not starting at the origin like sine does. It's going to start at one of the ends. I'm going to say use cosine. That's it. It's only two marks. We've done a lot of work already. They don't want us to leave at this point, but they also don't want us to pluck it from thin air. It has to come from somewhere, some reason. Okay? That's it. Um, there's literally no more working than to put all of these pieces together into their equation. Therefore, y equals, if you like, you can write it in general form first, and then, uh, that's nt, and then go ahead and substitute all the values that we have just found, but your next line is going to be their line, if that makes sense. So what have I got? 7 plus. There we go. Happy times.